Believe it or not, underneath this pile of sand, I'm cooking our dinner. Welcome to Hack a Week. Okay, do I have your undivided attention? Good. Today we're going to learn how to cook meat in an oven, in the ground. Okay, here we go. Pay close attention. Yes, you heard right. We're going to cook a turkey in an oven that we make in the ground. You just basically dig a hole and put the turkey in there. But I'm going to show you here in detail how that's done. Right, first and foremost, observe all food safety guidelines with meat. Look all that stuff up online. You'll find out all about it. And if you do this, you do it at your own risk. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do it. Don't try this at home. Ha. Anyway, here's what we got. Let's just say that this is ground level right here. We are going to dig a hole in the ground and we're going to go down probably about two feet, maybe a little further. And what we're going to do is line this hole with some rocks. I've got flat rocks all over out here. We will line the bottom and the sides with some flat rocks. Now we may need to taper the hole a little bit so that the rocks will stay in place. Then what we're going to do is we are going to put uh, some wood in here, get a good fire going. I'm going to use hardwood. I've got some oak. I've also got some uh, charcoal that I'm going to add to that. <clears throat> you could also do the fire up here above ground if you want to. Be careful. Observe all the precautions about having a fire. Around here there's lots of pine straw, so I'm going to do the fire in the hole. Keep really good watch on it. Make sure it doesn't get any sparks anywhere. Once we get that fire going really good in there, we're going to keep all the coals down here in this hole. What they're going to do is they're going to heat up all of these rocks. Then <clears throat> we'll take our chicken today. I'm not going to do a turkey today. I'm going to do a chicken. Next weekend I'll be doing the turkey. And we'll make a uh, wire cage. You can use chicken wire or fencing wire, whatever. And then we'll put the bird inside there and we're gonna wrap it up in three layers of aluminum foil. We'll put it inside the cage, we'll lower it down into the coals and the hot rocks and if you can at all avoid it don't let the uh, aluminum foil touch directly with the hot coals. More on that later on how to make this little cage to avoid that. Then what we'll do is have a piece of coat hanger wire that will stick up out of the ground once we get everything in there, we're going to put a few more rocks on the top and some of those we could probably pull from down below with a long pair of tongs. Don't grab them with your hands, they're going to be hot. And then we'll bury it. We'll just throw some of the dirt back in there and bury the top of it. And then we're going to let it sit for about six hours, maybe eight, depending on what size bird you put in there. Now you want to monitor the temperature if you can. I've got a probe for my volt meter <laughs> which is rather fitting for hack a week don't you think you could also go buy one of those temperature probes that you can poke into a turkey and then you have the readout outside the oven and you'll have your little meter right here with the readout and a probe going into the bird so you can monitor the temperature now the USDA guideline for fowl is 165 degrees at least for the bird to be safe to eat now that we got all that stuff covered, let's start digging a hole. Soapy, dig right there. Start digging. Start digging. <laughs> okay, so here is where we're going to do our pit. Right under this rock. That way uh, I can actually take this rock and put it back later and not disturb anything else. And also gives me a nice big space to work. Ugh. Get this out of our way. Okay, got a wheelbarrow here for the dirt. So here we go. This will take a little while. Got a lot of tree roots here to cut through as well. Okay, got a 
pretty good hole dug here. You gotta remember to leave it big enough to uh, factor in that by the time you put rocks on the bottom and around the sides, you're gonna shrink the volume of the hole. So make sure you get the diameter large enough. Okay, ready to start lining it with some rocks. I've got a lot of leftover flagstone from when we paved our back area here. Just start putting some rocks in the bottom. Try to cover up all the dirt. Now these rocks, as I mentioned before, are gonna get nice and warm and hold a lot of heat. So down here in the bottom, we'll actually layer a few, and then we'll start building up around the sides. I've got the hole lined up with rocks now. If you get a little creative, you can get them to interlock pretty well so that they're fairly stable. But if you want to be really sure they're not going to fall in on everything later, you can take a piece of fencing wire, coil it up a bit, shove it all the way down to the bottom and then expand it out a little bit as needed at the top and that'll help hold all the rocks in place for you all right the hole is ready I've split up some white oak here some hardwood I've got more over there if I need it this is just some pine boards that I split up, some dried out stuff left over from uh, the fencing. Used some of that for the uh, garden fencing we did, but we still have plenty left over. Makes good kindling. I've got a pile of pine needles here, or as we call it here, pine straw. So I'll get some pine straw down in the bottom of there, put some of this kindling on top, and we'll get this fire started. Oh, and by the way, safety measures. I've got the garden hose here ready to go. All I need to do is run over and turn it on if needed. Also have a fire extinguisher. I'm gonna keep a real close eye on any embers that might come up out of here because, well, around here we are surrounded by pine forest. So gotta be careful. And uh, the reason I did this in the middle of the stones is to kind of help avoid any potential spread of any fire. Let's get started. down in here. This stuff goes up like a match. Throw some smaller kindling on top. Break the pieces up so they'll fit. And we're going to just lay those in kind of a grid pattern, which works pretty well to get them started. Now if you do this yourself, be sure to check your local uh, fire ordinances. Call your fire department and find out what's legal and what's not as far as having a fire in your backyard. Some places don't allow it. We have a wood burning stove here, so everybody around me is probably just gonna assume that I'm having a fire in the wood stove. Okay, let's see if we get this started here. There's not much draft from underneath in this hole, obviously. So it might not just take right off right away. It might take a little bit of time to really get going. But as you can see, that pine straw, once it starts, it spreads pretty quick. Woo, smoky. Put a little more on top and that'll help with the draft. As I said, I'm going to keep a real close eye on this for a while and make sure I don't have any flying embers going anywhere. That pine straw gets burning pretty damn hot pretty quick. Well, that's getting started. I'll break up some more pieces here and get them ready to throw on. 
now it's getting hot in there. I started throwing in a few pieces of the oak. I used my miter saw to cut the oak in half just to get it uh, a little easier to get down in there instead of having the big long pieces. So I'll just start throwing a few of those in at a time. I don't want to put too many because I'll just kind of smother the fire out. <coughs> Caveman style. Now if you want to speed up the process, there's nothing that says we can't put modern technology to use. I could probably do blacksmith work in there if I did this long enough. <clears throat> okay, well, the fire's going, and while that's cooking along and getting ready, I can make the cage here for my chicken. I'll probably make a different one for the turkey next week, but... Uh, for now, let's roll this up, and um, I'm thinking the chicken can easily fit inside there. Chicken's a lot smaller than a turkey, so I'll just put a little bit of a curve in this, and roll it around to about the size where I think I can put a wrapped an aluminum foil chicken in there. I'd say that's about right. And then I'll just take the wires here and bend them over. And we'll make sure that there's no pokey things on the inside because that could poke a hole in the aluminum foil. I don't want that. I want that to stay totally sealed up. So I'll make sure all of these sharp pointy edges are well away from the inside. That's that part. Now what we want to do is put a bottom on this so the chicken shouldn't take up any more space than about that much. So probably figure, uh, now let's see, right about here, I can take this and start to fold it under. So I'll go ahead and, and pull these two back off, these two bent pieces. And then I'll just use some tin shears and I can use those to make some cuts here. Let's see, we probably want to divide this up into sections. So uh, I think I'll make a cut right here, and I can take that section and bend it. Let's make another cut. I don't want anything to poke a hole in the aluminum foil. So I just keep working my way around like this in sections. Okay, that looks good. I don't see anything in there that could poke a hole in my aluminum foil. So that takes care of that. I got a pretty good amount of coals in there now. I'm going to add some charcoal briquettes. Just to give it a little more latent heat. We'll let those go for a while till they start to glow white. Then we'll kind of knock it all back. And we're almost ready to put the chicken in. It's time to go prep that. All right, chicken prep. What we're gonna do is wrap the chicken up in three layers of aluminum foil. I got the heavy duty plan. So we're gonna put that just like that. I'll go ahead and peel off three layers right now so I don't have to wash my hands in between each time grabbing this because I'm going to be grabbing raw chicken and practicing safe food handling. We don't want to transfer raw chicken juice onto anything that you might touch before you eat. Got three pieces of aluminum foil. Put that one aside. 
We've got the chicken over here. I've already rinsed it, pulled out all of the, the gizzard stuff on the inside. I'm gonna rinse my hands off real quick. Okay, so we've got the chicken here. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, oil on it. This is, uh, this is olive oil um, infused with shallot, which has got a nice flavor. I really like this stuff. I use it on a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna put some on each side of the chicken. You'll notice I'm not touching the chicken with this hand, only with this one. And uh, we'll go ahead and get that rubbed all around on the chicken. Now we'll put a few spices on there. Let's get some pepper. Good old pepper. Let's sprinkle it with a bunch of that. We'll do that on both sides. Let's get a little bit of salt on there. That'll help keep the juices in. Now you could brine this overnight, but due to the dietary restrictions of some people, you may not want to do that because when you brine poultry, you pretty much end up adding about an eighth of a teaspoon to each uh, serving. So if anyone you know has uh, a problem with salt in their diet, it's probably not a good idea. I've got some garlic powder here now. Again, I'm keeping this hand clean, using this hand to touch the chicken and not touch anything else. Just get a goodly amount of garlic powder in there. Put it back over. <coughs> Woo! Pepper is in the air. And I sneezed away from the chicken, mind you. Okay, what's next? Let's get some summer savory in there. That'll be yummy. Get some of that on both sides. And of course, all of this stuff will end up just staying inside and making for some nice juices for a gravy later. I think that's about all I'm gonna add to this one. I'll give my hand a rinse over here. Now it's time to wrap this thing up. Now I can get after it with both hands. And what we'll do is bring this layer. Actually, let's, uh, let's go this way. And then we'll fold the layers over to seal it up like that. take the ends and fold them over for a good tight seal. We're after sealing this baby up 100%. Okay, now we'll take this and set it aside. Get the next layer of aluminum foil. And now we will go the other way with it. Put this seam lengthwise on the foil. Fold it over. Get them tight. And then fold over the ends. Flatten each time you fold it. Now as it turns out, the temperature probe I had, uh, the, in, the lining of it isn't heat proof, so I won't be using it after all. Uh, before next weekend, well next week, when I do the uh, Thanksgiving turkey, I may go buy another one that I can put right in the fire. Okay, let's do the last wrap. We're still looking good there. Let's do the seam on the other side on this one. We'll go that way with it. Nice 
tight seam. Hold it over really good, nice and tight. Open. All right, that's it. It's ready to put in our cage out there and cook it. And we want to be really careful when we do this that we don't poke any holes in the aluminum foil. Very important. Back to the cage here. Let's see. We need a way to lift this back up out of the fire pit later. So I'm going to take a coat hanger wire here that I've cut in half. And then I'm going to cut a little more off from each end. take that end and we're just gonna put a hook in it like so and then when it's time to take this out later I can just hook onto it and lift it up like that everything's ready I've got three stones in the bottom for the cage to sit on and we're gonna drop that chicken in there now let's get the chicken into the cage I think I'll put it that way. I'm just going to put it in there like so. A bit of an angle. And it's up off the bottom. That'll work. There we go. Let's drop it down in there. Now we're going to cover that up. Now as far as the temperature probe goes, I opted to not put it into the chicken after all. This would be a little difficult to do that. I think I'll just get one of those um, temperature probes that you can put in that I was talking about earlier. What I am going to do though is just put it in here so I can keep track of the ambient temperature inside my oven. So. The big piece of stone I took off, I'm just going to use that to cover my oven back up with. If I can remember how it goes. <laughs> I think it was like this. Yep. Close enough anyway. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is throw some sand around here to bury everything and keep all that nice heat in there. I've got a couple little gaps here. I don't want sand to fall down in there. So I think I'll cover up a few of these with a rock or two. That'll keep any sand from falling down inside there. I'll put some right around the hole outside here. everything in sand. And this will insulate it and keep all that heat in there. There we go. It's in there cooking. Let's see, let's get a look at the time. It's 1.25. So I would guess by about uh, five or six o'clock I can pull that out of there and it will be plenty done. Let's take a look at the temperature. Okay, let's turn this on to, let's see, we'll go Fahrenheit first for all you Americans. 463 degrees Fahrenheit which is 236 C. Well, that's, that's a pretty nice warm oven, I'd say. So I can check on this about every hour and I'll get an idea of just how well it's holding the heat. Well, it's about two hours later. JFET's out here checking things out. Let's take a look at the temperature here. 
turn this on to Fahrenheit and see where we're at. Now we've dropped down to about 196, so we have definitely lost some heat. We started out at about 452 hours ago. So that tells me that I probably should have banked up a lot more coals in this uh, before I put the lid on it and dropped the bird in. But you know what? It's okay because it's all good learning experience. I've never done this before, so you know I'm winging it right along with you here. Uh, my brother has done this quite a few times out in the deserts of Arizona, and he just told me, you know, dig a big hole, get a bunch of coals in there, and lower the sucker in, and let it sit for about six hours. But he probably had a much deeper bank of coals, and I think he was using um, mesquite wood, which is really good, holds a lot of heat. So uh, when I do this for Thanksgiving, I think I'll make the hole a little bigger, line it with more rock to help insulate it from all the sand nearby. The sand is probably acting as quite a bit of a heat sink and get about three times the amount of coals in there before I lower the bird in to cook all day. Definitely going to take a lot more heat for a turkey. And uh, I guess in a couple more hours we'll see how the chicken comes out. And you know what? If it's not done enough, oh well, I'll just stick it in the oven for an hour and finish it off and then we'll eat. The temperature is at 148 degrees, so I think we're pretty much done with any cooking that we're going to do. Let's pull this out and get a look at what the temperature of the chicken is. Rock. Lift it off and see what we've Alright, let's see what we got. I have my doubts. I really don't think it was hot enough. Should have had a lot more coals and uh, a little more air to get underneath it. We'll find out in a minute. It used to be 165. Right now it's creeping up. It's at 140, 150. I think I poked it into a leg. Let's try it over here. What would be, I guess, a breast area. Well, that's one. That's showing 170. So it, it may very well be done. Um, I guess let's take it in the house and we'll uh, unwrap it and take a look at it. Because that shows uh, about 172. Ooh, definitely warm. <gasps> wow. Look at that. Mmm, certainly smells good. It is reading about 160, 162. Probably could have been a little hotter fire for a bit longer. Well, let's cut it open here and see what we got. See what it looks like. There's still a little bit of red juices coming out of there. So it probably could have cooked just a little bit longer but it certainly is really juicy and succulent. So, yep, just a bit longer. But that part right there, that tastes done. So, anyway, I think I'll just go ahead and pop this in the oven for a little bit longer, and that'll be that. We'll eat it. So, we'll wrap it back up and put it in the oven and then we'll eat it like I said but you know what it was a good learning experience now I know I need a little bit more heat in there and it does work 
Uh, if I would have had just a few more coals, this would be completely done and totally ready to eat right now. And honestly, it's probably okay, but I'm not gonna take the chance. Let's go ahead and get it a little bit warmer. Get it up to above 165 degrees and then it'll be safe to eat. So if you do this, make sure you get a meat thermometer, get it up above 165 before you eat any kind of poultry. That's the magic temperature. And that's it. That wraps up this week. Next week, we're gonna be at the electronics bench. And in the meantime, happy Thanksgiving. And until next time, Yes, you heard right. We're gonna cook meat in the ground this year and Thanksgiving <clears throat>